guys, what is up? It is Eric Alston of the Aviator coming at you live once again from my house here in Central Florida. And today it's uh, May 3rd, yep, May 3rd, about noon. I, I This is what I look like on, I think around three hours of sleep, four hours of sleep, no, probably three hours of sleep. I went to bed super late, got up really, really early this morning around 4 a.m. to try to download the new Escalation map pack. And I got it. It took almost three hours before I got it, <laughs> but uh, I did get it and I've been playing on it this morning. I actually played with some amazing teammates. I had a T. Martin, X Jaws, Onslaughts, uh, Sons of Justice, gosh, uh, Mr. Blackout, Dr. Chiz, New Kaiser, uh, Nuck Fuckets. I mean, just crazy, crazy, big, huge list of, of different commentators I've been playing with. Some really great guys as well. We had a great time. Oh, Wings of Redemption as well. We had a lot of guys in here and everyone was kind of just playing the, the map pack. And in fact, uh, one of the games I'm going to have a clip from at the end of this, x was in our session, just kind of joined and we ended up playing with them and whatnot. And just crazy seeing how many commentators are on really, really early, early in the morning at one of these releases. But I wanted to take a minute really quick just to tell you what this video is about. I just spent the last hour and a half or so editing together a quick uh, kind of explanation for one of the toughest maps in the map pack and how you can play it better so you can make sure that you can, you know, whenever you start playing or even if you're already playing the Escalation map pack or if you're getting home from school right now, whatever the story is, that you'll know what to do when you get to this map, whether you're playing TDM, Domination, Demolition, CTF, I played them all on this map, and I had some fun with it, so I hope you guys do as well. Um, without further ado, and with no more explanation, because I am toasted, so tired, <laughs> uh, check out the video after this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. I'd be happy to answer all the questions I can for you. If you guys need anything at all, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to do all I can to answer the questions and to move forward from there. So guys, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the map pack and I'll talk to you soon. See you later. Hey guys, it is Eric, also known as Aviator, coming at you live once again to talk to you a bit about the Escalation Map Pack, and in particular, to talk about the map stockpile. Now, as you guys know from my intro video, I stayed up extremely late last night and got up extraordinarily early this morning in hopes of getting the maps, hopping online with a few friends, and making sure I got some gameplay for you guys, so that when you guys finally download these maps and are ready to play them, you'll have at least a few advantages over most people in the world, as you'll already know what to watch out for and what you can do to counter people's evil evil moves I'm here to tell you the ghost campers are out in force on these maps it's kind of a challenge but I have faith in you guys if you watch this video carefully I have faith that you guys will be able to just completely and totally decimate the competition so without further ado let me jump straight into what we're doing here we're obviously playing team deathmatch on stockpile I'm rocking the rapid fire specter for the majority of this game in fact I think all of this game it's not actually the gun I would recommend most for this map I probably recommend a FAMAS or some other kind of longer range weapon a commando would be great something that's going to be able to be decent up close but also give you a little bit more range because this map is incredible in the history of Call of Duty I can't think of a single other map that is more chaotic than stockpile now maps like Rust or Nuketown or any of these other maps like even Bog and COD 4 none of those had the different levels and the different lines of sight that, that Stockpile has. Stockpile is a mess. You're going to find yourself getting shot from behind and from the side more times than you can count. And it's only because no one really knows where to go or what to do or how not to flip a spawn yet. Stockpile has the, the spawns pretty much all over the map for TDM. I, I think they flip back and forth about nine times in this game. You're going to kind of get an idea for the chaos that I'm talking about. Now, obviously, by now, you see that I've been spending the majority of my time in this central building. Now, the central building is, without a doubt, one of the most powerful points on the map. And that's simply because everyone's kind of gravitates toward it, just like it's a, there's a magnet in there or something. I swear, it's crazy. Plus, people like to push the buttons to make the doors go up and down. It's kind of a fun little gimmick. I'm sure that'll kind of pass as time goes on, kind of like the zip lines did on, on Kowloon and whatnot. But the central building is incredibly important. Now, as you guys can see, there are multiple levels in the central building. There's a high, a high rise catwalk, there's a secondary level, and then there's the ground floor that's kind of an industrial area. Now, with this in mind, you guys want to make sure that you're either controlling the high ground or you're keeping the other team out of it. I'm oftentimes running around at the bottom and it's kind of foolish of me. I get lucky here and there. You guys are going to see. I don't claim to be the best player, but I did get fairly lucky in this game. Without further ado, I want to talk about a few more things that you guys should be doing on Stockpile to ensure your team's success. First and foremost, be aware. Now, I know I talked about this a little while ago, but this map has a plethora of lines of sight. 
basically anywhere you're standing, you have two to three different places you're going to be shot from. Because the spawns are so finicky in this map, particularly in TDM, you want to be very, very cautious about leaving yourself exposed at all. Now, that doesn't mean you should camp. Because a lot of people are camping right now, it's absolutely obnoxious. You basically, you're running around a corner, some guy's laying down with a FAMAS and goes, just spraying at you. Really frustrating, but you can compete with that. As long as your entire team works an area of the map and allows the other team to come to you, you will succeed at this map. So, what you want to do to succeed on Stockpile. I definitely encourage that your team works the outside edges of the map, especially if you're playing against a stronger team that's trying to lock down that center building themselves. Work your way outside. Everyone's going to be driving themselves in, trying hard to get control of that central building. Work the outside of the map, particularly if you're using a silenced class, something that's not going to alert the other team as to where you are. I recommend a silenced M16 or a silenced Galil for this. I don't necessarily recommend using Ghost. I actually think that Hardline will probably benefit you more in this situation. Uh, running counter spy planes and spy planes is going to be really, really crucial, particularly in the first few days of this map pack, because people are camping. People are trying really hard to make sure that they can, you know, pull off a couple of decent gameplays on these maps. So work the outside edges as much as you can. Use the high ground. There are lots of buildings you can get in on this map. I know that some of them are kind of frustrating to get in and out of. Some of them are going to have a lot of different entrances, but you do what you can to use the high ground to your advantage. Whenever you're above the other players, they can see much less of you than you can of them, and that gives you a great opportunity to get headshots and just to work the objective. Next, leverage cover. Leveraging cover on this map could not be more crucial. I know that it's kind of one of those things that you hear about every single map, but because this map has so many just sundry different lines of sight and ways that you can die, you really want want to be careful to hide behind cover, to work yourself around, show as little of your body as possible, and as Woody would say, control the engagement. Next thing you have to keep in mind, I want you guys to be really careful about checking corners. I know that a lot of the time you're going to still be gravitated toward playing in the central building like I am right here. Mind you, this was my first game on this map. I had no idea what to expect. That's why I'm kind of looking around like an idiot trying to figure out what's going on. So, recognize that most people aren't watching the corners. You guys can either work the corners, kind of run from corner to corner, work your way around, or if you're not doing that, you need to be very careful that someone else is not doing it to you. The next thing I want to talk about is the areas of the map that you need to be most aware of. Now, as this game winds to a close, I want to make sure that I back out and go through some theater mode spots with you, just so you can get an idea of exactly where you need to be careful of. As well as one or two spots on the maps that you can use to your advantage to be able to wrap around behind the enemy or to have great cover while you're working the objective. Now one of the first things I want to cover is my first death in that TDM game. As I mentioned before, the height advantage is absolutely imperative in this game, and as you're about to see in this clip, you're going to see exactly why I die where I die. He absolutely had position on me. So watch this clip, notice where he is, and as you're starting to play on this map, start thinking about how you can either use his position or at least work to counter it. If I'd gotten behind cover, if I'd been a bit more observant, I could have easily even shot through the, the wall that he's standing behind. All right, next clip. This one is gonna give you a good idea of where you can go to defend the B flag if you and your team hold the A and B flag combo. If you use these stairs to your advantage, you'll be shocked as to how well you can persevere over the other team, just keeping them out. In front of me is the garage door. That garage door goes up and down. Keep it open, let them think it is open and clear, and just dodge grenades left and right. I'm not even wearing slack jacket in this video, I'm actually wearing scavenger. So yeah guys, definitely a great spot and something you're not gonna see very well used for at least the first little while on this map. All right guys, last but not least, the one thing you guys need to remember on this map is that there are pretty much endless routes that you can use to your advantage working your way around the map. Here's a quick clip of me just pushing behind their spawn, doing what I can to push them around and having a blast at it. This is a beautiful map, just like all the other maps in this series. They're definitely my favorite map pack of any Call of Duty release as yet, and I'm really enjoying them. I hope you do as well, and I'll talk to you very soon.